Welcome to the Evolution Show. I'm your host, Johan Angren. In this show, we connect smart energy solutions, electric transports, artificial intelligence, and sustainable living. We look for inspiration to address some of the biggest challenges and opportunities of our time. And today, we turn to the sea. If I were to tell you that within four to five years, we will be able to transport several thousand vehicles to any port in the world using a wind-powered vessel, you would probably think I was crazy. But today's guest is Pat Tunnell, the Chief Operating Officer from Valenius Marine, a Swedish company that is developing the largest wind-powered roll-on, roll-off carrier. Join us for an inspiring conversation about the future of fossil-free freight on the sea. And don't forget, if you like the show, give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Now, let's get going with the conversation. This is the Evolution Show. Welcome to the Evolution Show, Pat Tunnell. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me. Yeah, you are the Chief Offer Operating Officer, CEO at uh, Valenius Marine. And uh, this is a company that designs and builds large cargo ships. And currently you're one of the leaders in this very in a, in, in exciting project. And you're developing one of the largest cargo ships in the world that will be powered by the wind using high tech sails. So I thought we could start with you. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your background and what you do at Valenius Marine? Absolutely. Well, background, I'm passionate about water. I'm passionate about sustainability. I've actually become passionate about sustainability, but, but I'm, I have been passionate about water for a very long time since I was born, uh, sailing, yachting, uh, windsurfing, diving. So I spend my time as much as possible on the water or in the water. Uh, so it came natural to, to study uh, uh, as, a, as a naval architect. So I'm a naval architect as, as for, for education. And I've been in, in uh, various positions uh, in different companies and uh, since 15 years back, actually. So it's quite a long time I've been in Valenius. Um, been working with new buildings, uh, designing vessels, designing ships, uh, project manager for, for a series of new buildings. Uh, working with sustainability and was the environmental manage manager uh, before I joined the, or before I took the position as CEO uh, in the company. So, uh, so that's me uh, yeah. and, and, the, and the company also. It's not only me that's passionate about sustainability, but the company is as well. It, this is one of the core uh, fundamentals of, of, our, uh, of our company. Yeah. And for those who don't know, you, you're involved now in the project where you're designing a large cargo ship that will be, as I understood it, uh, powered by large motorized sails, uh, enabling almost completely emission-free freight across the sea. And could you tell us about this very exciting project? Absolutely, I'd love to. Well, this is something that's been in, in our, our vision for a very long time. We uh, developed together with some, some partners uh, a concept uh, that was 15 years ago, which we called Orcel. Uh, that was a, a emission-free vessel. That was kind of a picture of our vision. Uh, it was not, we, that was a concept study or, or kind of a, a picture uh, that was, uh, that we could use as, uh, inspiration for, for our organization for, and for others. But in the reality, we realized it, the vessel would never look like that. And that was, that was developed in 2004, 2005. Then after, uh, I mean, we were determined to be able to push the limits and push the sustainability agenda for shipping. And um, in, in 2009 and 2010, we continued or we continue to work with these kind of issues, but we continue this project towards the, the emission free shipping uh, and uh, looked at many alternatives uh, using wind, using solar, using waves, the energy that is around us, but also other, uh, other sources of power with, with uh, biofuels, etc. Uh, when we looked at the free uh, energy that, that is around us, we realized quite soon that wind was the most viable option. 
and we started looking at different kind of, of uh, ways to extract the wind energy uh, and came to the conclusion that this kind of rigid wing sails m is the most efficient way of, of, of doing that. So uh, a couple of years ago, uh, or, or a little bit more than that, we uh, kind of came to the conclusion that this is something we will pursue and, and, and look more uh, in detail to. So it's not motorized sails. You could say, well, it's motorized because it's driven by some kind of motor, or electric motor or a hydraulic motor. We haven't decided yet. But, uh, so, but otherwise, it's a rigid wing sail. About a size of 80 meters, approximately. The 80 meters high, this, this wing rig. So we're looking now at possibly four uh, of these rigs uh, on, on the vessel. Uh, on a vessel that is uh, slightly above 200 meters long. And uh, just for people to understand, it's, it, these sails could be uh, turned in 360 degrees, right? So they could basically follow the wind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, and that is some, uh, that's a safety feature uh, mm -hmm. also, because, I mean, you, you would like to, you, you need to be able to, to put them uh, in the wind direction if the wind is too strong or if you're having challenges. So absolutely, it could, could rotate 360 degrees. But it should also so, yeah. be possible to reef them and put them down uh, to, to, uh, for, for several reasons. For, for mm. One reason would be the, the obvious that you will reduce the drag, uh, you, you reduce the forces in the wings. But, uh, but the other reason is, is, as all, is almost as obvious when you're coming into, uh, into port and there are bridges and so on, you need yeah, to yeah. reduce the height a little bit. We are, we're now designing the vessel. It's about 100 meters high uh, in total with the, with the oh. hull and the wings together. So it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a big, uh, a massive site. Yeah. Is it uh, automated in some ways? I mean, you don't, do you have people, you know, taking down the sails? <laughs> Classically, a lot of people, you know, you can imagine climbing up and things like that. Or is it kind of really advanced technology? We, we're going to use uh, as much automation as we can, as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't mean that we're going to be unmanned. Uh, we, we have had comments and, and, and people thinking this is going to be an unmanned ship, but absolutely not. This is going to be manned, uh, and, um, but, but still highly automated. So mm -hmm. it's going to be as much automation as possible. Nobody will be, be climbing in the rigs uh, during sailing, at least. <laughs> no. Um, how far are you in the project? Do you, I read it, you, you have, you're um, collaborating with the uh, Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, the, but there are other partners uh, as well, right? Yeah, there are other partners as well. So this is, this is divided into several projects, but the, the research and innovation project that we are running right now, uh, that's uh, together with SSPA and KTH. It's, I mean, we, we managed to gather the, the really strong competence around sailing in Sweden. So uh, we, we managed to get that together like two years ago when we, when we wanted really to form this project and, and, and get going with this project. Uh, and everybody got interested and everybody got a lot of confidence. So, so there's a lot of good competence uh, in the project. And then we uh, uh, also, so, so these are the three partners in this, in this uh, research and development project. It's us, the Royal Institute of, of Technology, KTH, uh, and SSPA, which is, uh, is uh, a ship design and, and naval architecture uh, company in, in, uh, in Gothenburg. Also, uh, we, we want to highlight that this has been funded from Trafikverket, the, the transport authorities uh, in Sweden. Uh, so we got a 27 million Swedish crowns funding for, for this project. From them. So yeah, so you've got some funding there. Do, are you putting in some money yourself? Yeah, you need to do that, and, and I mean, we we this is this is something we believe in. So we we uh, are of course investing a lot of money, a lot a lot of, of time uh, mm. and resources into this. So yeah. so uh, it's absolutely fantastic that we got the funding from from Traffic Verkip that that mm. really enable us to be pushing this a little bit faster. But uh, this is something we are determined to, to be able to pursue anyway. Everyone is obviously asking, when can we see this ship? And, and how far are you into the project? Uh, and are you, I know you're designing it and you, you, I will come to that soon. You're, you're already testing a hull and so on. But 
uh, will you build the, the, the whole ship? Um, is, is Valenius Marine doing the construction of it as well? Or do you have partners uh, to, to help you build it? We don't have welders in the company, so we will definitely uh, have welders doing it and, and, and uh, partners doing it. So it's going to be a shipyard building it. But absolutely, that is our intention. We cannot do this. We, we are not doing this project just to get a, a, a fancy report and a good, uh, nice looking uh, model in, in our lobby. Uh, but we are, we are really doing this because we want to change shipping. We want to drive the sustainability agenda and, and, and push the shipping towards a truly sustainable future. Uh, so our intention is obviously absolutely to, uh, to build this vessel, to get it built. Um, how far are we into the project? Well, this is, this is a lot of new uh, uh, areas we need to investigate. So we have been, been focusing a lot, this project has until now focusing a lot on, on building theoretical models to be able to simulate different conditions and different uh, uh, possibilities. So these models are now uh, uh, ready and, and we can start using those models to design the most optimized hull and, and wing. This is a, uh, the thing is that you need to optimize the hull together with the wing to get the most, the best performance out of, 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 of the vessel. Mm. Um, so, um, so we're now at the stage where we are, are trying out now new hull forms and our new, new designs. Uh, and uh, as you mentioned, uh, we are also uh, testing models in, in, in towing tank. I saw, I saw a video about that very recently and it was very impressive. And uh, I have seen similar videos a, a couple of times, but this was the first time I thought I really looked at it. And I, saw, I thought like, yeah, this is really cool. And it looks like you, I mean, the hull looks, I mean, it looks like a hull basically. And just a, a model that's one in 25 uh, size. Uh, it's... Um, yeah, you, perhaps you can tell us a little bit how this hull is being tested. This is going to be tested in several different ways. So what, what you saw in that video is uh, a, a, model, a, a traditional model test, so more or less, uh, where you design the underwater hull uh, and the, the upper part of the hull is, is really, doesn't really matter because you're, you're, what you want to test is the uh, hydrodynamics of the vessel. Uh, so you test how the rudders are, are, are working, you test how the resistance is, you test the wave pattern, what, what happens with the wave pattern and, and, and so on. Um, so that is done in every, uh, with, with every vessel we design. This is not unique for, for, for this uh, sailing, sailing vessel. Uh, but what is unique for this sailing vessel is that we're going to have, we are also building demonstrators. Uh, we actually, it's probably going to be a video or two uh, on that very soon uh, because we have we built a model uh, seven meters long, uh, which is now at KTH and the Royal Institute of Technology for uh, fitting of uh, sensors, uh, uh, deck equipment, um, and also in the end, also wing rigs. So we're going to have a, a, a demonstrator uh, operating in open, open sea and, and, uh, and tr testing out sailing capabilities and maneuverability and so on. Mm. Uh, but that is yeah. not normal to do that. But this is no. in this kind of unique project, you need to, 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 to put out some demonstrators as well. Yeah. And the sails, uh, of course, when, when can we expect to see that uh, on the models at least? Uh, or have you been tested? I know you've been out... Uh, you know, with sensors on, on uh, cargo ships and so on, and you, you have really some real good data, uh, the positive data uh, that suggests that obviously that co has convinced you, have convinced you that this is doable. Well, the sales are in the design, the design phase right now. So, <laughs> so it's, there are a lot of options. There is uh, different choices of material, different size, uh, choices of size and reefing mechanisms and so on. So that is in the design phase right right now when we're testing a lot of, of, of options uh, there. there. There are a few things to, to consider. Uh, uh, there are many things cons to consider, the performance and et cetera, et cetera. But, but also, I mean, the, the, the material, if you, when you're looking at the America's Cap vessels for uh, the ships, the, the yachts, the America, for the America's Cap, you could, they're kind of building these in the most exotic materials uh, possible. Uh, but they are not so sensitive to cost. <laughs> we are sensitive to cost. So you need to balance the 
performance, the weight of the rig, with the cost of the material and so on. So this is this is still in the design phase, phase I would say. So uh, uh, I hope we have some initial designs ready. At least I mean we have some ideas, of course, but we we will have to be we we would be able to see some initial more uh, fundamental fundamentally radio designs in in uh, in after summer. I understand. And um, most people, they might think that it's impossible to run an enormous cargo ship uh, of today. I mean, you're talking about thousands of containers and things like that. But your research has proven that it's very possible. Uh, and could you tell us about the size? You men mentioned the 200 meters long, uh, and it's basically running on sails uh, for 90%. But how does your um, ship uh, defer to compared to other uh, sailing ships or other cargo ships? Uh, I mean, is it a little bit smaller as a cargo ship? Uh, or are there things like speed that you will, you know, have to run a little bit uh, slower, of course, because you're running on sails? Well, we are in our transports and, and this concept, the, the WPCC concept stands for wind powered car carrier. So it's not containers, but it's cars. And that's the business we've been in for a long time. So that's, that's where we have our core competence and that's why we focus on that. So we're gonna run. We're gonna. We we are aiming at a capacity of maybe seven thousand cars, which is is similar to what the traditional car carriers have. Uh, and, that, and and that kind of size is you need to have that kind of size to be able to run an efficient transportation. Um, the size of the vessel is around two hundred meters long, maybe a little bit more, uh, and about forty meters wide. Uh, and, and a lot of the, I mean, one of the questions we get quite often is what about stability? How do you, how do you, if you, if you're going to have this, that kind of massive sails, aren't the vessel going to capsize? But uh, with, with a lot slightly wider uh, hull, you will be able to increase the stability. So a lot of the stability comes from the wider hull. So it's not going to yeah. be a lot of, of it's not going to be a traditional yacht keel under this vessel actually even i noticed it, that it was quite wide uh, when i looked at the hull uh, and i'm a super amateur i just uh, i just looked and i thought this looks a like little wide uh, i mean compared to what i was expecting and, but not on the other hand not so high perhaps that's true and it's not as high as the the traditional car carriers and 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 if you build it a little bit wider you will be able to manage you will be able to have the capacity still without having an additional uh, decks. Yeah, uh, it's all about volume. It's it's a classic, uh, yeah. Um, but if this project is successful, uh, when can we expect to see several ships perhaps, uh, I mean, with, with this sailing technology? And, or perhaps, uh, when can we see the first one? You're, you're, you're uh, phrasing the question wrongly because it's not if this, uh, oh, project sorry, is successful. Sorry. When, 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 when this yeah. uh, successful, uh, when this project is successful, we're gonna see this in water uh, late 2024. This okay. is this this is our target uh, target date. Mm -hmm. The the project, as I mentioned, is running in, in 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 different phases. Now the research and development project should be ready by the end of 2021 and and, and early 2022, and that that's kind of then we should have the design ready for order. And then it takes a little bit time to to have uh, the discussions with the shipyards and the uh, and a uh, more detailed design of the vessel. Uh, but it's uh, realistic to have to, to say that the vessel will be launched and 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 op or delivered rather uh, and in operation by late 2024. Yeah, that sounds promising. I was not expecting that early actually. So that's great, yeah. Uh, I've been thinking about uh, how we can transform the today's fossil, uh, very fossil dependent shipping industry to sailing ships for quite a long time. Uh, I read about this guy called Gustav Eriksson from Åland. Uh, he was a quite famous sailor and ship owner, but he became mass, uh, famous because he was the latest uh, survivor, so to speak, uh, to, to run his uh, small fleet with, with ships. When we had this, you know, a boom uh, in the early 1900s with um, uh, the diesel engines and so on in the shipping industry, which was totally taking over. But he was able to, until the late 1930s, I think, uh, one of his most famous was, uh, ship was the four-masted bark ship, uh, Herzogin Cecil, that until the early 1930s was able to ship about 3,000 tons of grains 
per cargo between the UK and Australia. So when I heard of your ship design, I thought, finally, this is the time, the time is ripe for the change. And are you familiar with Gustav Eriksson's sailing ships? It's, it's kind of a funny story, but more importantly, do you think that you'll be, you'll be able to compete with the diesel engines and the, yeah, the modern ships we have today? Yeah, we, we are we are convinced that we will be able to compete. I know a little bit about Gustav Eriksson. Uh, mm -hmm. I, it, it was actually he it, we uh, he was mentioned also in an article in the Swedish Shipping Gazette uh, quite recently, together with our project. And and um, it's actually the late forties. He was he was uh, uh, continuing with sailing and had the la latest grain uh, transshipment from Australia in in nineteen forty nine actually. Oh. So, uh, so that was, uh, it was really, he was keeping on to the sailing area, which was yeah. good. Yeah. Um, but he and the others at that time had different challenges that we have today. We, today we have much more knowledge. We have much more technology. We have uh, uh, satellites, we have weather uh, forecasts that's super reliable. They were kind of relying on what they could see and, and, and the weather could change in a couple of hours without even having a clue about it. So for, for us, it's going to be one of the most, one, one very critical component will be route optimization. And, and knowing about the weather forecasts and knowing about the, 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 what's going to happen a couple of days ahead is going to be make us, make it possible for us to choose different routes and, 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 and also optimize in, in order to get the right winds and the good conditions for sailing. When it comes to competing with, with, with the traditional diesel engine, it's, it's, gonna, it's of course going to be, be a challenge if, depending on what the customers want. If, if they want a, a very fast uh, transportation over the Atlantic, it's gonna be difficult for us to compete. But if they want a timely delivery, uh, which could allow a little more time, it's going to be uh, easy for us to compete. And I think the the uh, the difference now, um, the, the, what happened in the last few years is there has been a much stronger drive towards sustainability, and it's going it has been a much stronger drive to actually take the right decisions and, 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 and making this more or less emission-free uh, transportation available, I'm, I'm pretty sure it will attract a lot of, of, of customers. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I was thinking about, I mean, there's always specialized routes. I mean, there are customers that have, have a higher demand, so to speak. They, they, they want to have a green, green delivery, so to speak, emission-free. But I also think that it doesn't have to be the fastest ship all the time. If you have some certain um, merchandise, they don't have certain goods. They don't have to be delivered as fast as possible. Maybe it's the customer want to have a cheap delivery. Uh, I mean, if, if you can turn down the cost, perhaps, of course, you don't have to, to run those and, and um, um, maintain all these diesel engines. It's a, it's a high cost for that mechanics and everything. Uh, and the fuel, of course. So, uh, I mean, it should be possible. Perhaps not on all routes at the at the beginning and so on, but you have to start somewhere, you know. So, uh, as, as, as I think, it, at least you should have a, a good chance uh, if you specialize and, and compete with, you know, the markets that are most interesting for you in the, in the early phase. Customers, mm -hmm. in the end, are the, the car uh, car manufacturers. Yeah. And if, you mm -hmm. have a, uh, if you're a car manufacturer, trans, uh, constructing uh, electrical vehicles with no emissions, yeah. you don't want to have them. Uh, I mean, the footprint that comes from the transportation, no. you don't want to have, have those cars kind of no. affected no. by that. No. So, so giving them the possibility to have a more or less fossil free uh, transportation I think that's yeah. going to be. A I can even imagine that you have put it, put on a you know some kind of carb. If you have a carbon tax, this will be solved automatically. But you can also put on like we have on the on the airplanes. You could you could pay a little extra to say that okay, my car is delivered uh, emission free with uh, your ship. I mean, a lot of people will would put it in that premium and pay for that. Um, I, I'm sure. Um, and I, I can just look at myself. I mean, I, I was one of the earliest Tesla owners here in Sweden and. Uh, if I had a cho choice to, to have my car delivered 
with your sailing ship, it would be no brainer for me. I mean, it's uh, even if it costs you know a couple of hundred dollars extra, or whatever. Uh, it's it's of course. I mean, it's the whole concept. You want to have an electric car. You want to have it manufactured, of course, as well as green as possible. So, yeah. It... Most of us we don't know where our goods comes from, how it comes no. from. We go to the store and we buy something, but we have no clue how it's got there. No. So uh, it's a lot about the transparency. If you and and if you, as you say, if you order a car and you have a box where you could tick in that I want to transport it emission free. I guess yeah. a lot of people would be able to do that. I would, would yeah. strongly consider doing that. But yeah. it's not that transparent today. Uh, but as, as I understood it, about 90% of the emissions on, uh, uh, from your ships will be removed, basically, by running it on, on sail. Uh, and uh, so how about combining the sails, for example? Obviously, you have electric motors you could use it with, but uh, if you want to power those electric motors, you could perhaps use batteries or hydrogen fuel uh, solutions, uh, hydrogen, fuel, hydrogen, fuel, hydrogen fuel ships. Uh, how do you think about these combinations potentially being used? When we reduce the energy need by that much, uh, that by 90%, the, it, it kind of opens up a box of a lot of opportunities. So um, um, the, the, the energy intensity that we have been needing on the conventional ships, that's, that's made us kind of forced using something with a high, high energy density. Uh, now we are m much more free. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of different solutions and, and opportunities in the future with, with biofuels or synthetic fuels or hydrogen, as you say, batteries. But... Uh, in this project, we are focusing now on the first step, which is bringing sailing back uh, to shipping. And, and then we, got, we, we need some support engine, absolutely, uh, for, for occasions when the wind is not that favorable or when, when uh, we're going in, on, in and out of port and so on. Mm. Um, but the focus now is, is to get the sailing as good and efficient as, as possible, and then we will look at the engine solutions. But definitely batteries will, will, will play a role, I, 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 maybe hydrogen, fuel cell solutions, mm -hmm. um, some kind of, of, of bio, biofuel, biogas, um, mm -hmm. synthetic fuels. There's so many, so many different uh, options coming now. And, mm -hmm. and if you don't have to bring that, if you don't have to bring that much as we normally do, it's going to open a, a lot of, of opportunities. Yeah, uh, my previous guest here on the show was Maria Holmberg from Climon, and Climon is yeah, Climon is developing this technology where you basically turn wasted heat into electricity, and they they have already installed these so-called Climon modules into large ships like um, the new Scarlet Lady from uh, uh, Virgin Voyage, Voyage, Voyages, this cruiser, and Viking Grace as well, exactly. So I, I just I just thought of it after we, we talked on the show last time that yeah there should maybe be something for you as well uh, because uh, potentially because you all of course you have heat on on the ships in some ways you must have sh uh, engines and so on and it might be I mean I, I understand you can't plan for it right now you're focusing on the sales but I just throw it out there I, I thought it could be something to to look into um, I don't know if you know about Climon's technology but it's it's uh, interesting. We know well about Climon and, and, and their technology. We've been in, in a lot of dialogues with them. We actually tried a similar system, not from Climon. Um, I think it was already in 2011. It's still on board. Um, but Climon has a really nice packed product, uh, uh, modelized, which, is, which makes them very, very attractive. The thing is that we rather don't want to use that kind of system because we in in an, in a in a perfect world, you do, would wouldn't have any waste waste heat, no. uh, and uh, the the engines that we are running now they are they are quite massive, yes. So they are producing a lot of waste heat, and then it's possible to re retract some of that lost energy back to electricity with with a climate system. So it's fantastic, uh, but for this kind of vessel where the engine power or the engine load is much less. The, the potential of, of getting that into uh, electricity is also much less, uh, of course, obviously. Um, but it's definitely an interesting 
technology, uh, which I I believe is is uh, it's going to to play a role in the future, definitely. Yeah. Uh, we, we, for these yeah. kind of sailing vessels, I don't. Maybe maybe it's a little bit difficult to to apply. Yeah. If you look into the future, then if you if you think about three to five years from now, uh, could we expect to see? You mentioned 2014, but could we expect to see ships in operations? And where do you think you you're going to start? Are you focusing on some markets or some place in the world? Do you think that's going to be interesting to start with, or? As a basis for our project now, it's, it, I mean, this could be applied on any ocean. Uh, it's, it's, it's primarily, uh, probably, it's best for long distance uh, voyages where you could sail over, uh, over the big seas, uh, over the big oceans. Um, but it could be applied on any ocean voyages. Um, what we are starting at looking at is the Atlantic trade. So we are starting looking at maybe one or two ports in, in Europe and one or two ports in, in, in the US, in North America. Uh, it's quite predict predictable winds. Uh, it's, uh, it's almost always uh, a bit of wind. Uh, so that's, that's why we're starting there. How about the interest right now? Do you have any customers or some, some do you have, have you been approached about potentially orders in the future or at least interest or are they kind of slow, slow and, you know, a bit hesitant perhaps because they are still in this kind of old, old way of running the cargo ships and the, the, the car, sh the car deliveries and so on. We've got a lot of interest. It's, it's, it's really, really fun to, to, uh, to bring this uh, project out in the, in, in the open space because it's, it, it attracts a lot of interest. Uh, we, we receive a lot of interest, definitely. Um, it's still, I mean, these vessels are operating in a network. Uh, the, the traditional network of, of car carriers is, based on having a lot of vessels. Uh, so bringing in uh, one or two or three or four vessels that is not operating in the same way, because this is going to be slightly slower. Uh, instead of operating in maybe 16 knots, we're going to operate these vessels in maybe 10 knots. Uh, so taking these vessels into this, the, the current network is a little bit of a challenge. Uh, so it's going to be a complement, probably going to be a complementary uh, transportation in the first phase, at least. So it is a bit of a, 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 a there are a little bit of challenges uh, uh, taking this into uh, into the customers uh, already established networks, so to say. For anybody interested in working uh, either with your project or contributing to this kind of process, because uh, we all want to see this. I mean, we want to transition away from the uh, fossil dependence and. Uh, I personally would love to see a renaissance of the sailing ships. Uh, it's it's fantastic to see. I mean, it's it's free energy, uh, and it, it's also can be combined with modern technology, which you are talking about navigation, the design of the hull, and everything. If it's optimized, I can see it definitely as a great um, you know future technology. So, if anyone's interested, either if you want to do some recommendations for people or that are students, or if someone wants to perhaps start their own project. Well, there are so many areas where you could start this kind of, of, of project. You, I mean, we love competition. That's good. It, it, that's got only, only going to drive us forward. So, that's, that's perfect. Start a competing uh, a project as well, or join our projects in some, some, some way. Um, you could start, you could go through the naval architecture, which is uh, now we are cooperating in this project with, with the KTH, uh, the Royal Institute of Technology. So that is one, one way, but it's also a little, lot of, about digitalization, I would say. So this project could also start in that end uh, with that kind of competence because it's, it's Steering these kind of, of systems together and optimizing them together is going to require a lot of, 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 uh, of uh, knowledge of, on, on the digital uh, ecosystem and di di on the digital side. Um, but uh, there, there is, uh, I mean, with a good idea and, 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 uh, and a strong engagement, you come a long, a long way. Yeah. And finally, uh, I always ask my, my guests if they have some input or some, some, uh, something they want to share about uh, using artificial intelligence, because that's something that's used uh, by almost any company right now. 
So if you want to uh, share anything you're working on, or if you're looking into to using AI as a tool for your data analysis or something like that, uh, feel free to share this. We uh, have been working on data analysis uh, uh, for a very long time. So we've equipped all the vessels with, uh, with a lot of sensors and collecting all the data. So we are kind of building up a huge database now. I think it's like maybe 3 billion records or so now uh, on, on, on the operational side. Um, so uh, we are definitely looking into AI. Uh, so far we haven't been able to utilize it so much, but we are still uh, basing our uh, analysis on, on uh, more or less physical models instead, uh, which is serving us very well. But I think taking the ne next step, we are looking in, into it definitely. Uh, yeah. making not uh, uh, a totally black box maybe, but a combination by the physical model and uh, uh, AI. So kind of a gray box solution is probably the first step we're going to take. And, and that's not that far away. No. Interesting. Uh, thank you so much, Per. This was a really interesting conversation. Uh, I've learned a lot and I hope uh, the listeners and watchers uh, has as well. Uh, and I look forward to have you back on the show. Maybe in a year or so, we'll see what happens. Uh, to, yeah, to follow what you hap happening with Marine um, Valenius Marine. So thank, thank you. you. And uh, you should also follow us on our home homepage or LinkedIn or or or, or uh, Instagram. That uh, we're gonna publish uh, information continuously on our project. Great. I was uh, I I've almost forgot to ask you about that. So great to point out. So yeah, check check Valenius Marine out. They have a, a YouTube channel. I'll put a link in in the descriptions below. So don't miss that. And uh, again, thank you, Per. This was really uh, really interesting. Thank you. Thanks for watching the Evolution Show. Feel free to continue the conversation in the comments below and give us your input. Was it good or bad? If you want to see the show as soon as it comes out, consider subscribing. In the next episode, I'll share my thoughts on some of my favorite energy companies and why I believe they are a good investment both for your wallet as well as the planet. I hope to see you next week.